Let's Owl Tales. This is Jeff. This is David. Hi, David. Let's play Monster Hunter. Hi, Jeff. Yes, let's. So in this episode, we're going to finally go after the weird uh, acid-spitting chameleon-looking... The super leaky, lakey thing. puke bird. Yes. It's called a puke puke. Yes. Uh, puke being in be... the name on purpose, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this will also be our first cooperative episode. Yeah. I see you peeping that pig. Yeah, that's Poogie. Bingo <laughs> pet Poogie. Aww. Uh, Poogie is a monster hunter thing. Occasionally when I say it's a monster hunter thing, what I mean is it's a stupid thing that it's a holdover from previous games that's in here only because it was in previous games and because, as generally speaking, Japanese video games are stagnant. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you, Dragon Quest. <laughs> um, but sometimes I mean... Exactly that, except it's a pig and you can pet it. So and it's great, <laughs> and you can give it a little like you can a little give it a name. And you can change its costume. You, you can, can dress it up with like a little bumblebee. Now there is a gameplay reason, and then by which I mean there is a gameplay reason. In order to pet it properly, the the music will play, and then a little hearts will come out, and then you have to press the circle button or the right face button in order to stop petting it. It's very confusing because one of the buttons says pet, and one of them says stop. And you need to hit pet to stop. You hit stop. the one that says pet so that you stop petting at the right time. And then you'll get, you know, a bunch of hearts coming out, Poogie. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it's will, um, it will like you more uh, the more you pet it, the more consistently you pet it between missions. And eventually it will start to run up to you. Uh, and we can also use, once it's like sort of maximum affection level mm -hmm. and it starts following you around Estera, it will be able to root up items but we will before we get there we have to uh, sort of raise our affinity right our critical hit chance <laughs> against the pig yes so now you are making yourself a fun little switch axe yeah i'm going to get a switch axe for this one switch axe is not one of my mains uh but i'll see if i can get it to do it some justice here the switch axe as the name implies is a giant axe but it can also switch into, in this case, a great sword. It is a medium mobility weapon and a transforming weapon, much like, uh, like the weapons in Bloodborne. So you have transformation attacks as you go from one mode to the next. Uh, the axe mode will uh, build up energy, also kind of think passively build up energy. Uh, and then when the meter is full, then the sword mode is charged and it has a certain element applied to it and you can uh, uh, you can also You've overcharge it by doing elemental hits, and then if you have uh, overcharged, you can do the zero-sum discharge, which is the super for the Switch Axe, which I will be doing later, because that's that's what you really want to see. That's where the numbers come in. Yeah, that's where yeah. you you latch on to the monster, and the no matter where you... Done. It will it'll take it... It'll, it'll take you with it, wherever it goes. Hmm. Partner, you'd better come You'll be its, its own little pariah, just like that. Hey there. And you're good. Mm -hmm. Pariah is the name of that. right? Parasite, regardless. Alright, so we're gonna... Are, are we gonna get to see the fun little Eden animation? Aw. Oh, no. You're gonna talk to the lazy guy. It's Fiverr, bro. It's Fiverr, bro, yeah. Not as fun as Energetic uh, Fiverr. Or whatever his name is. Good luck. Yeah, this is more of the guy that will just, uh, well, he, he gives a bunch of these delivery requests, which will give us more ingredients for the mm -hmm. kitchen. We will take some, uh, generally speaking, I will be using the meat platter. Uh, the reason we're using the meat platter mm -hmm. uh, is because it gives us attack bonus. Hey there, partner. It kind of, it'll, it'll automatically find all of all the ingredients you've unlocked because you can actually go in and get deep into those menus and the, uh, the sort you, of You can make custom make things. Custom platters. Uh, we're going to be u either using Chef's Choice, which prioritizes fresh ingredients and uh, health and stamina, uh, or the meat platter, which prioritizes damage bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to use damage bonus for the most part, especially for these first ones because I... Having played the game frequently, I'm very familiar with, like, the monsters and stuff, so I'm not as worried about... Well, there's only a few that I will be focusing on being defensive with, and the Puke Puke is not one of them, so... No, you you burst down the Puke Puke. Yeah, yeah, Puke is, uh... 
it's not too threatening. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's more of an exercise in the first monster that can reliably inflict uh, status effects on you and also the first monster that you can uh, actually get tail cuts from. So th- those are the, the important new things about the, uh, the old Puke Puke. Hey, right. Boltari is waiting to join the quest. <laughs> Weird. I'm going to go pass out on this chair. A social hunter is a smart hunter. <laughs> Remember to exchange guild Such cards a great animation. Uh, how when do you do sitting, that one? When you're sitting down, you have like the four face buttons, which are divided as like two for drinking and two for uh, sleeping. Yeah. Uh, so yes, that's that's the more uh, more hilarious sleeping animation. The other one is you just kind of like lean forward and go to sleep on the table. And you see the moment at which I find you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like uh, I'm back. The switch axe has two forms: axe and sword. Yeah, there we go. Get switch axe on. Uh, a little bit more of the things you can do. You can do the wild swing combo, which is infinite, which is what I'm doing currently. Right. You're getting a good view down my sniper. Uh, forward, forward and attack. Forward and uh, sort of your triangle will uh, be an advancing attack. Uh, you can do fade slashes a little bit like the fade slashes that the longsword can do. Uh, you can do like a backwards fade slash to do like a step with a double cut. You can uh, you can do side hops like the lance in between your uh, attacks. And then when you convert over into the great sword, you have these super wide sort of figure eight swings that you can do. Uh, as you can see in the upper left, the little meter that's counting up, that's the charge on the uh, the actual weapon there. So the little middle the middle thing is just sort of increasing ambiently. And as we do damage, uh, the outside uh, edge of the whole thing will glow. Uh, the only important thing there is that when the whole thing is glowing, that means that the zero-sum discharge will include the attach and large explosion. So that's like the the one that's like the cool move I actually want to see. But oh, and also if the meter goes too low, you can't be in sword mode unless you sort of like reload. I think, I think it'd be kind of like a energy level, but also kind of like a <laughs> look at that kitty. Look at also my little like gladiator ammunition. kitty. <laughs> little gladiator. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go fight that Puke. <laughs> All right. I think I'm about to just shoot it with the sniper round first. I think that's how you open it up. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna gather some scatter nets because. And that's great. Yep. It's still great. And Slice. my ammo right now is currently just shooting slicing ammo at the tail and trying to cut the tail off. That herbal medicine heals so much faster than an antidote. Yes, it does. So yes, that, as you mentioned, the slicing ammo will do massive slicing damage. damage. Yes, slicing damage. And I guess cutting damage, severing damage. Mm-hmm. Hitting that tail, you get more slicing damage. We want to get that tail cut off. Yes. And the slicing ammo tends to travel along the body, so like you can hit the base of the tail and it'll generally work and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Those numbers. Yes, those are tasty numbers. Also, you may have noticed that the... Uh, that I'm poisoned because of the poison cup that was uh, cut on the ground there. That's that not am. actually, yeah, that's not actually from the Puke Puke, although the Puke can uh, generate poison. Right. You can use those poison cups to poison other monsters. Right, yeah. even monsters like the Puke Puke, which you would think wouldn't be poisonable. Super is, though. Oh. Got oh. Ti- I got that tiny... Tiny stupid. Anyways, there's the backward fade, fade slash. Ah. See those little tiny hits. Uh, we'll, the tiny staggers can be prevented with a uh, a armor skill, which is called flinch free, which has three different levels to it. But we won't be seeing that level of armor skill for a very long time. There goes the tail. Oh, there goes the tail. <laughs> it was actually when Puke Puke was about to charge up, where the tail gets super gross looking, and then. Oh, knocked me out of Wyvern. All right, right there we go. This, there time, we go. this time, boom. Uh, that's. I have to be careful with Wyvern ammo because I can knock you around like a yes. ragdoll with that. So yes, you can. And here I'm carving because mm-hmm. I have poor impulse control. Another, yeah, another <laughs> faux pas. Another hunting faux pas. There's guys that just either. There's always that guy that's just like, I see the shiny, and then yeah, it's like, that, there's no time to be a team player. <laughs> I must get mine. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I try to not do now. that too much. I do. And see a little, little shiny pop off of him there. Nice. For the rest of the fight, I'm pretty much just using the shotgun ammo. Very sad that he's out of position. I can't do it. Damn it. <laughs> and then he yells. And yeah, he, he yells and he leaves. And yeah, we'll, we'll get some more scattered at. We'll try again. You gotta get that Puke Puke material, though. I gotta get my tail card. Yeah. Inside the Puke Puke tail. Is a Puke Puke, 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 Puke tail. tail. It's great. Think about it. Ooh, you got a quilt. Yeah. Um, I gotta get some more smoke nuts. Uh, the reason that I'm collecting smoke nuts is that I'm going to be making lots of far casters. And what are far casters? You combine a smoke nut with the other thing that you need for a far caster, which mm -hmm. I think is an excite shroom. Uh, anyways, it'll, it'll become a far caster, which appears as like a, a green puff of smoke kind of icon. Uh, the far casters will take you to the nearest camp. Mm -hmm. Now, you can fast travel in this game, a new thing for Monster Hunter World. It's so much better which than is great. previous games. Uh, you can, and also there's multiple camps. Uh, previous Monster Hunters, there's only one camp at the like the beginning of the area, and you could use if you use the Farcaster, it would uh, work you back. Uh, there is a utility to that, especially for just um, because in older Monster Hunter games, when you gather items, that you have to deliver them manually. So, <laughs> right. So being able to just pop right back in is is much more useful in a sort of gathering, cutting down on minutia sense in previous games. But in this one, it's very important effect is it's an emergency exit because you can't fast travel when you're in a fight. So you have a red uh, red circle around your uh, sort of you know mini map. Yeah. But if you have a forecaster, uh, it's an almost instant activation. Uh, and then you'll be back at camp. Uh, this can avoid... This is a good way to avoid death. So, yes. Uh, as as soon as we get to monsters where imminent death is much more of a possibility. It's not so much for the Puke Puke. But I, I, will be, I will be adding that to the uh, item loadouts. Uh, I've uh, had lots of use of going through the... Uh, Say some of the in-game monsters again on, on the the character the, the other character on the other PC version. I uh, was doing a solo one. And I used a lot of far casters. <laughs> it's a great way to get out of dodge. Free. Yes, it's, it's also important to learn because a lot of it there's a lot of this muscle mm -hmm. uh, to learn that you can do it uh, and learn how what 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 the shortcut is for doing. It. Mm -hmm. And because you can make your own shortcuts, of course, you'll have to just kind of learn based on your own. You know. uh, in, in my case, I like having it on the like, right item loadout and then like, on the bottom. But, yeah, you can put it wherever you want. So, like, right. Just remember, it's a thing you can do. Yes. There's lots of things you can do. In the game. Some of them are more useful than others. You're using a shotgun. I am. Uh, and previously, uh, I was using sticky ammo, which explodes and staggers and causes break damage. It's great. Mm -hmm. Sticky oh, ammo sure. will also knock other players around. I've been stunned. Yep. And I was about to shoot you, and then you're like, no, I'm good. No, I'm so good. I'm good. It's fine. didn't shoot you. Yes. Uh, if someone is stunned, uh, any kind of staggering damage, like any kind of damage, because in multiplayer in this game, you can't hurt uh, other players. So you won't you won't attack their health, but uh, you can stagger them, flinch them, knock them out of attacks, launch them into the air, that kind of thing, which normally is annoying, especially if you're like a hammer and you're trying to hit someone's face and then all they're doing is using the widest possible attacks. I'm looking at you, longsword users, <laughs> <laughs> where everyone's just being flinched, and it's right. like I just I just want to I just want to hit the head. It's gonna benefit the team if I get his head. Just I want to hit the. Anyways. Yeah. Yep. I hey, hey, there's those mega potions coming in handy. Yeah, those mega potions are very useful. Yeah, uh, this, but this the, is me sticky just ammo. him in the face. <laughs> the, the sticky ammo, the cluster bombs, uh, a lot of those things will cause like huge knockback for other people. Uh, he is also weak and almost dead. He was he was limping. So right. What better time to get on his back? It just starts that. 
so we are not uh, we're not capturing this one. No, we will start capturing in the next mission. Right, but this one we're gonna go ahead and just murder, which is fine. There are, there are a couple of rewards that you're more likely to get for murder, so uh, you didn't the get murder the murder rewards. Yes. Yeah. Just for well no, for well, cards. I'm almost gonna charge that. Murder. Okay, we've got a full glow. Now I can do the zero sum. There's the attach. You just gotta keep mashing on the button. And there's the explosion. All right. Nice. Very happy they finally got the stupid <laughs> attack. Up. Yeah. I can't remember which one of us ended up killing all these Jagras. I think it was me. Yeah, it's some, somewhere in the middle of that melee, the Jagras yep. were, uh, were taken out. I will say spread ammo is very useful whenever you're dealing with monsters that bring adds with them. Because then you can just, you know, plop, plop, plop. Oh, you're all dead. Great. Mm -hmm. My, uh, I'll be using the light bow gun later and light bow gun, uh, which I like a lot more than the heavy bow gun just because it's a lot more mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, I like playing the spread light bow gun types. So we'll be, we'll be specifically making one that will, at the end of the game anyways, be a very spread heavy. Well... It's not maybe not the most optimal spread, but it's the most beautiful looking spread light bow gun in my opinion. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna be making. <laughs> right. And here you are sharpening the thing mm -hmm. I don't have to do, so I run <laughs> yes. ahead. Yes. But oh, then I loaded stupid weapon is so bad, it's yellow sharpness. It's so yeah. it's terrible. I did just reload the sniper rounds into my gun though. So we'll see how this goes. This guy just trying. He's just hanging out. He's having, he's having a meal. Yeah. And explosions. I notice that uh, David is over there, standing at the edge, curiously. Oh, on, and there, there he goes. I go. <laughs> there I go. <laughs> uh, uh, you almost fell too, but no, not good, quite. But not. Should be just one more hit. There yep. It is. I made it back up in time to get the car. <laughs> yep. Get some bones, get some carves. Mm -hmm. Typically, you'll get three carves off of a monster once they're dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you'll get the quest rewards as well. Right. And as I said, there are some rewards you're more likely to get as a carve than as a quest reward. So those are that's one of the instances where you actually do want to murder instead of capture. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. I have to check on that. Uh, there are a couple of the ones that, that lists it in the whatever the descriptor is. Yeah, it says in the description, but I... I uh, there's there's some number crunching. I'll be able to check on the Reddit. Feel free. I, I think that it might be the case that the uh, drop tables are the same. Uh, but either way, yep. and here for I the am. Most part, we'll just be capturing. shooting with my gun. Uh, yeah, if, capture. If, if it is in fact um, higher drop chances for certain things, which you would think would be true because that's what the item descriptions of them say. I very briefly danced so for like off frame. Give that mustache kitty a kitty you get sausage. And now you've got your all your rewards, which it's one of the best feelings is when you're looking for one specific thing and at the end you get like three of them. Mm -hmm. You're like, well, I never need to do this this particular hunt ever again. Fantastic. Well, usually the desire sensor will kick in. You won't get any of it for two, and then when you only need one you'll get like four or five at once. Or the person you'll be hunting with will get four of whatever mm -hmm. it is you need while you You're get like, I don't even want these. I'm going to just throw them in the garbage. Or sell them, you know. Mm -hmm. You've done well. Thank you, Nier. So, up. so next up is oh it's a fun little quest where we where we go to the right. wild spire to waste the elder mm -hmm. we'll be going to a new sure you know map you need to do. yes uh, which has a much a much better skulls. route for That's getting uh sleep herbs and parish rooms which we'll be using to make uh, tranquilizer bombs and the right. stuff we need to capture so it'll be a lot easier to gather those things as we're going through there you are fiber but before, we, we don't have to pay attention to that because we fought a new monster, which means there's new <gasps> stuff. stuff. 
You've got the alloy yeah. armor. Alloy armor was not from fighting Puke Puke. I think that might just be an HR requirement. So, like, after okay. doing a certain amount of quests, I think that one unlocks. Uh, the alloy looks pretty nice. It doesn't really fit um, aesthetically with any of the other sets because it's like this, you know, translucent blue. Mm -hmm. But we're going we're to have to ignore, and I know this is painful, we're going to have to ignore the fashion for just a second because the alloy does give you a uh, speed, speed sharpening. Speed sharpening on the pants. Which yeah. That's pretty nice. Speed sharp, uh, when you use a whetstone, it takes four, uh, four like, swipes. Right. Uh, and each level of speed sharpening takes off one of those swipes before your weapon is back at you know, maximum efficiency. So. Right, right. Since I will be mostly, well, for the next episode I won't, but for the most part I'll be using uh, you know, melee weapons. I'll be sharpening a lot. Right. So. Why did you make the insect pants? Uh, the insect pants also give, I think those are the ones that give honey hunter. Right, so right, right, right. That's a little bonus, honey. Uh, the insect hat, quick cheating. Now, that's yes. useful for all types. Uh, maybe not so much for Sword and Shield, which is already super fast sheathing. So it's like the actual speed of the animation when you're putting your weapon away. Right. And there are three levels of that. Now, you're also getting the it's on the Puke, Puke Pants because Puke 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 it has botanists. Yes, so your botanists. So I'm going to try and stack botanists up as high as possible because level four botanists will give you extra gathering points, bugs, <gasps> mushrooms, etc. Well, he got a little poogie hat. He's got little goggles. He's got uh, goggles. We're not going to be actually making the poogie vest for the, the cat. Uh, we'll you be making a little poogie bow. Yes, a little blo bludgeon bow thing. Mm -hmm. uh, which is good because it has poison effect, so the cat will just kind of be there doing poison damage, procking that poison. Poison works like it does in, I guess, most kind of RPG games where it's just a damage over time. Right. You just, it just starts ticking for however long. Uh, which, you know, it's just, you know, just damage that happens. So why not? Might as well. Right. It's essentially uh, free damage. Most enemies don't take that long to proc poison the first time. Mm -hmm. So it's and then I like having poison for uh, the beginning of the game. So oh. I think it's pretty useful. Uh, in, in the little low rank areas that we're in, we're gonna be making a poisoning hammer as an example. Uh, we're also going. Oh, the the way you can tell if someone's poisoned is they they drill purple goo. goo out of yeah, it's gross. right. One of the reasons, like you know, how you can tell they're exhausted because they're drooling regular goo. Mm -hmm. So if it's purple, they're exhausted. They're poisoned. They are poisoned. Next time we will be fighting a bear off in the wild smart mm -hmm. wastes, doing the best kind of quest as the name of the quest is because if you lampshade it it makes uh, it not terrible it's, yeah it's like hey you know how it's but we made a joke about it no no one likes uh walking slowly behind someone and escorting them through an area uh so we'll just we'll just call the name we'll just name the quest the best kind of quest get it and like this doesn't actually make it better <laughs> yeah but we get to experience that next time yes uh, that would be next time so if you've enjoyed this content uh we'd really appreciate it if you go to our patreon where you can pledge to give so much per month um if you can't do that uh, one time paypal thing or you know word of mouth if you can't do that like comment subscribe all those things um the support is how we are able to do this so uh we appreciate it very much <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut that part out. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs>